I've been living in Germany for five years now, but there are still some German things that I don't understand. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. There are some amazing things Germans have or do that we had never seen in the US that we have come to love. Apfelschorle, taking shoes off in the house, the Eierschalen-Solbruchstellen-Verursache. But to be honest, there are some things that Germans seem to love that I'm still not sure how I feel about them, or I just genuinely don't understand. And I may just need some German insight to help me out. And that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about today in my video. Normal in Germany, but please explain to me why. Life can be so crushing and harsh. So if you're looking for a reason to carry on, look no further than white asparagus, huh? Yup, welcome to Germany in the spring. When I first came to Germany in 2014 during a study abroad program while I was in university, I lived with a German family in Bonn. It was May when I came and my host mom talked about wanting to get asparagus one evening for dinner for us as a special treat. She talked very excitedly about it, which I didn't understand considering asparagus is a common side dish in the US, but I was surprised and mildly amused when she brought it home and it was completely white and not green like what I was used to. Since that first bite into what Germans call white gold, and since seeing white asparagus queens crowned and white asparagus mascots spreading the seasonal cheer, I've had to ask myself, what's the big deal? Now, those are fighting words in Germany and I'm well aware it's like asking a young white blonde in the US wearing knee-high riding boots, a plaid shirt, and a trendy hat, what's the big deal with pumpkin spice season? First off, white asparagus just isn't a thing in the US. In fact, so much so that you can tell the cultural difference in asparagus between the US and Germany in the name itself. If I say asparagus in the US, the default thought is of green asparagus and it's not necessary to say the color. I honestly didn't even know anything other than green existed before coming to Germany. And when I'm talking about spargel in English, I have to specifically say white asparagus so that Americans know I'm talking about something different than what they are used to. However, in Germany, say spargel and the white version is the default thought. In fact, on menus, you will find Gruner spargel specifically written as to avoid getting the hopes and dreams up of German diners thinking they might get their long white shank only to be disappointed pointed by a green one. But two, Germans eat a lot more seasonal than Americans. A lot of grocery stores have staples they carry year round, but a lot of fruits and veggies are seasonal. Of course, fruits and veggies are seasonal and don't naturally grow year round, but that doesn't stop Americans from getting what they want when they want it. And this is also the case in Germany for some fruits and veggies, but in Germany, grocery stores follow the seasonal items a lot more. And in my opinion, a lot more of these exciting foods that pop up for short times of the year are significantly more delicious than white asparagus. For example, Fedeweiser Zeit is to me much yummier, but new wine, although celebrated in some parts of Germany, doesn't get nearly the same amount of celebration as the king of vegetables and edible ivory, Spargel. I try to look up why there is no escaping the pandemonium over Spargel, and this was one of the best explanations I could find. It's a celebration of spring, of dreary, long, dark winter days ending, fertility and abundance. Except I can't agree that there will be much fertility and abundance, even though Spargel is supposed to be an aphrodisiac, considering the, um, after effects spargle can have on your um, urine. I feel like spargleite is just a thing you have to grow up around to really understand and get into. And honestly, even though I don't get it, I am happy that Germany has something they can share such a massive amount of love and excitement over, even if it's just a vegetable. 
But Germany should not be as famous for its beers as it is. Rather, it should be much more famous for its crazy drink combinations. The best way I can come up with how to describe Germany's drink scene is that Germany is like a group of 10 year old boys standing at a soda fountain who thinks it's fun to see how many different good and or disgusting drink combinations they can come up with. But it sometimes feels like Germans will only drink their drinks mixed with other drinks. Let me better explain by talking about some of the what I personally consider successful ones first. First up, any form of shorla or drink mixed with carbonated water. This can be wine, apple juice, rhubarb juice, or more. These initially sound like they will just be watered down lesser versions of the original juices, at least that's what I used to think, but I can attest that they often lighten, enhance, and freshen up the original versions. Now, when I drink regular apple juice, I actually feel like it is a little too sicky sweet and too concentrated sometimes. Another huge win is the wildly popular Spezi or Coca-Cola mixed with orange Fanta. This is the much more literal version of my metaphor of 10 year olds at a soda fountain. And I wouldn't be surprised if some prepubescent kids at CC's in the US have accidentally made this before. But for whatever reason, no American has heard of this yet and this is the soda to drink in Germany and one of my favorite drinks to pair with a German meal. Now, we could also chalk up Rattlers as a win for Germany as many Americans love the beer lemonade mix, but I must warn you that if you come to Germany and venture down the Rattler route, you might end up in a dark place that involves mixing beer with a banana juice known as a banana Weizen. In fact, banana juice, a juice that I didn't even really know existed before coming to Germany, is also popular mixed with cherry juice to make Kiba, short for Kirsch Banana Getränk. And I once found milkshake mix in our German grocery store for American style milkshakes. I saw the pink color on the packaging thinking it was the American classic strawberry milkshakes, only to be shocked to see it was the cherry banana combo, a combo I had never seen or heard of before, and I can confirm it is not a classic American milkshake flavor. But let me know, what are some of the wildest drink combinations you have seen in Germany? A giant sausage in a tiny bun. I just don't get it. When we first moved to Germany five years ago, I was excited to see that the sausage eating stereotype of Germans was very much confirmed and that at nearly every type of festival, sporting event, or gathering of Germans, sausages will be served. However, a shock for every American coming to Germany for the first time will attest to is when you were handed this for the first time. Yes, this is the standard way you will be served a Bratwurst in Germany. A tiny bun with long protruding lengths of sausage hanging out either end. The sausage will be delicious, and I'll say the bread is superior to an American hot dog bun in flavor and texture with its crispy outside and soft inside. But why the dangly bits? <laughs> Besides just being aesthetically a bit grotesque to Americans, don't Germans want a bite of bread with every bite of sausage like I do? After after all, Germans are extremely proud of their bread and you would think they would want to enjoy it as much as they can. To me, it's a complete thing. For Germans, it seems like they ordered a sausage with a handle. But even with my sausage qualms about how Germans serve this food, I definitely don't get over the look on our American friends and family's shocked faces when they get their first experience holding an obscene sausage to bread ratio here. Sticking to the sausage theme for a moment, Germans are stereotypically direct and straight forward, except with one thing. I've actually praised Germany in the past for calling things what they literally are. I do appreciate the fact that Germany calls it what it is. Straight up, it is blood sausage. I hate the whole like English thing of blood, black pudding, because when you call it black pudding, you're making it sound like it's some kind of delicious thing. Like in the US, we have chocolate pudding. And you think you're gonna want it. I like that they just call it straight out what it is. Don't try to pretty it up. It's blood sausage, all right? It doesn't need to be called anything nice or different. In a great diversion from the classic German stereotype in which they just say things plainly and directly, Germans have created what sounds like the ultimate German stereotypical dish by throwing out all the greens and replacing them with sausages in a Wurstsalat. A sausage salad is in no way, shape, or form a salad as there is critically no salad in the salad. Rather, this dish contains sliced up noodle-like cold cuts or deli meats piled up with oil and vinegar, maybe some onions, and okay, maybe you get some greens with pickles. And although you may find those couple of veggies in sparing amounts, there is again no salad making this 
not a salad. Okay, there are obvious huge holes in this argument that I am now going to self-inflict considering there are a plethora of other dishes out there, including ones in the US that are popular that call themselves salads, but don't include any leafy greens. In fact, the definition of a salad is actually basically just a cold dish with mixed up ingredients. In both Germany and the Southern US where I am from, one of the most beloved side dishes is of course, potato salad, which includes no leafy greens as well. And the argument that the term salad is just safe for dishes that just contain veggies is thrown out the window and we consider chicken salad and tuna salad. So maybe part of my confusion comes from in the US when you don't want this on a burger, you would say a burger with no lettuce rather than salad. But in Germany, I've always heard and said ohne Salat. So Part of it, I think, is the fact that in German, the word Salat, in my mind, is directly associated with leafy greens or lettuce. So I'm willing to take back what I said about Germans not being direct by calling this a salad, considering this dish technically does meet the requirements of a salad by definition, and it literally is a salad of sausages, but it still seems deceptive in my mind when I associate Salat with greens. But let me know, who loves a good sausage salad? If you're looking to risk your life, move into a German home. I've lived for five years hearing from Germans how absurd they find it that we come from a state in the US that is prone to tornadoes, but still insist we build our houses out of wood. Now, there are different reasons for that, but that's not the topic of today's video. Now, I have come to love many things about German homes. Their thick concrete walls, for example, the Holladen shades and tilting windows. But somebody needs to explain how it is still allowed in Germany to have water splashing about right next to to a power outlet. I will admit that nothing bad has ever happened in the five years that we have lived on the edge by having the pulsating electricity directly next to a stream of water where we fling our soaking hands up to flip the lights off. Okay, so in the US, it's actually not so different, really. Local building codes trump national codes in the US, but national codes do require at least one outlet in American bathrooms and actually recommends more than one. So this is a bigger difference from say the UK where you will basically never find a power outlet in the bathroom, except for maybe those little ones for electric razors. However, a difference between the US and Germany from what I have found is what the outlets look like and how close they are to sinks. Now, surprisingly, from a country that loves rules and regulations, there is no guidance for how far away an electric outlet has to be from a sink in Germany, and the only guidance for where an outlet can be or can't be in the bathroom has to do with distances from baths and showers. In the US, say specifically in Oklahoma where we are from, such outlets shall be located within 36 inches. <laughs> But often in American bathrooms, an outlet will look like this as opposed to this. This is a GFCI outlet, which if it detects even the slightest leak in power by say, oh, wet hand conducting a bit of electricity, it will trip the outlet and shut it off. Now, if it isn't obvious, I am not an electrical engineer or electrician. So no, I don't know the specific technical details of electricity. So I won't get into the nitty gritty, but not all outlets look like this and may look like a normal outlet in bathrooms, but they will be wired to a GFCI outlet somewhere else in the house, which will regulate it as if it was a GFCI outlet or rarely because they are more expensive, you may have a GFCI breaker in the panel. Since we also are used to seeing the outlets with buttons on them in bathrooms, we were surprised in Germany that the outlets in the bathroom look basically just like the ones in any other part of our house. Rather, what I have found is recommendations for using outlets with certain IP ratings that are protected against dripping water from above, or even outlets with covers to protect them from splashing water. Or since 1984, it has been required in new builds in Germany to install an FE Schalter that does the same thing as a GFCI breaker that are so rare in the US. Rather than the protection and reset buttons being in the outlet itself like in the US, these are installed in the breaker box in Germany. But okay, let me shift to another bathroom outlet and ask, does anybody know what I'm supposed to plug in right here next to the toilet? Or is this for charging my phone for um, extra long sessions? To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is, swimming shorts or speedos? 
What do you prefer? Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you in my next video. In a worst salat. In a worst salat. In a worst salat. I'm questioning how you pronounce salad in German. Wurst Salat. Wurst Salat. In a Wurst Salat. Wurst Salat. Wurst Salat. Wurst Salat.